when you went to Carrigan. Indeed, your dancing days are done. Chicken the sake. You'll have to be put with a bowl of tin bake. Johnny, I early knew ya. They're rolling out their guns again. The room, the room. They're rolling out their guns again. The room, the room. They're rolling out their guns again. But they'll never take my sons again. No, they'll never. Swear into we are with your drums and guns and guns and drums a room a room your drums and guns and guns and drums a room a room with your drums and guns and guns and drums the enemy nearly slew we are oh darling dear you look so queer Johnny. Oh, darling, dear, you look so queer. Johnny, I hardly knew ya. With the emigration of hundreds of thousands of Irish people to the United States and elsewhere after the Great Famine, the tradition of young Irishmen joining foreign armies continued. Many were conscripted into the Confederate and Union armies during the American Civil War of the 1860s. They brought their marching tunes with them, tunes such as St. Patrick's Day and Gary Owen became popular marching songs with the Irish brigades. Gary Owen was also a particular favorite of General Custer and may even have been played at the Battle of the Little Bighorn, commonly referred to as Custer's Last Stand, when the Native Amer American Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho tribes, led by people like Crazy Horse and Gall, annihilated the 7th Cavalry of the United States Army.
Easter Rising of 1916 was, of course, a seminal event in 20th century Irish history. Controversially, it was probably reconceived by Patrick Pearce as a blood sacrifice after original plans for a countrywide rising miscarried. As a military operation, it was, of course, a hopeless failure. But as a clarion call to a whole generation, it was a brilliant success. The Foggy Dew is one of the few songs about the Easter Rising. Indeed, one of the few about any period to mention the uncomfortable fact that far more Irishmen have died for England than ever died for Ireland. For many Irishmen serving in the British forces, the Easter Rising awoke in them a sense of national pride, identity, and disillusionment with the cause for which they were fighting. After the Easter 1916 rising, the volunteers were in disarray, and it seemed as if yet another generation had shot its bolt. 
Several factors ensured that this would not be the case. Firstly, people were incensed by the shooting of the leaders of the Easter Rising. Secondly, the internment of the other rebels, along with many political activists and suspects, provided an unforeseen opportunity for the planning and the reorganization of a new Irish Republican army. The Sinn Féin movement went from strength to strength, aided in no small part by the threat in 1918 of conscription to fight what was known as England's War in Flanders. The Anglo-Irish War, or the War of Independence, can be said to have begun on the 21st of January 1919. The first Dáil met in the Mansion House in Dublin and claimed sole authority as the sovereign Irish government. This led to the commencement of hostilities and a general uprising all over the country. The British responded to this with martial law and terror. A particularly strong rebel area was the county of Cork. Commandant Tom Barry was the most outstanding IRA leader of the period. His unit, the West Cork Brigade, was renowned all over the country for their daring and for their courage. His book, Guerrilla Days in Ireland, is a vivid account of uh, his days in command of the West Cork Brigade. We will conclude this journey through the military history of Ireland with a song that celebrates Tom Barry's famous but still controversial ambush on an RIC auxiliary unit near the town of Kilmichael. And whilst we honour in song and in story the memory of Pierce and Mike Bride, whose names are illumined in glory with the men who have long since have died. Forget not the boys of Kilmichael who feared not the ice and the foe. The day that they marched into battle, they laid all the black and tans low. So here's to the boys of Kilmichael, those brave men so gallant and true, who fought neath the green flag of Erin, and they conquered the red, white, and blue. On the 28th day of November, the tans lifted town of McCroom. They were seated in cross tenders, which ran them right into their doom. They were high on the road to kill my call, and never expecting to stop. When they met with the boys of the Colium and made a clear sweep of them all. So here's to the boys of Kilmichael, those brave and so gallant and true. Who fought with the green flag of Erin and they conquered the red, white and blue. The battle been over at twilight and there in the glen so obscure. Threw down her rifles and bayonets and made her way back to Grenure. And high over Dunmanway town, my boys, we sang of the brave and the true. Of the men from Tom Barry's Bocalium movement, the red, white, and blue. So here's to the boys of Kilmichael, those brave men so gallant and true. Who fought with the green flag of air, and they conquered the red, white, and blue. Some who will blush at the mention of Connolly, Pierce, and McBride, and history's new scribes and derision and the pages of valor denied. But here's to the boys who cried freedom when Ireland was nailed to the mast, and Father Tom Barry's bold column to give us our freedom at last. So here's to the boys who killed Michael, those brave and so gallant and true, who fought with the green flag of A.
Thank you. Hello, Romila Magov. Uh, uh, thanks a million for the reception. We got through it anyway. <laughs> but we're not done yet. I <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, as a. Uh, yeah, what? Grant, Romila Magov. We'll have a drink afterwards, I'm sure. Or two. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so they were the bunch of songs we picked to suit our extremely gory and interesting history. Um, but we'll finish now with the, a song called The West Wake, which caps it all, sums it all up. Beside a vigil keep the west asleep, the west asleep. Alas and well may hear and weep that a conic lies in slumber deep. The hill lake and chains might have fed and free. Mid rocks their garden chivalry. Sing, oh, let man learn liberty from crashing wind and lashing sea. The chainless wave in lovely land, freedom. Sure, the great God never planned for slumbering slaves a home so grand and the long, a brave and the haughty race. I'm not in Santa in the place. So no, not even their sons is grave. Quite destroy my glory strays. For often in the colors van to triumph dashed each color clan and fleet as a deer the Normans ran through Cottage Leave a pass. Hadrahan and later times saw Jesus brave and the glory guards clan Ricard's grave. So no, they died their land to save at Auckland slopes and Shannon's way. West 
to sleep, the west to sleep. Alas, and well, me and we, that can walk the lights in slumber deep. But hark, a voice like a thunder spake, the west awake, the west awake. Thank you.